Um, poor Mehdi Hassan. Poor his Mehdi book, Hassan. His book, How to Win Any Argument? Yeah, Except lay down, lay down with dogs, wake up with <laughs> fleas is the uh, unofficial subtitle of this. So Mehdi grew a spine and a conscience at exactly the wrong moment, and he paid for it with his sweet, cushy gig at MSNBC. So Mehdi Hassan exits MSNBC following show cancellation. I mentioned earlier that me and Max, we had something in common with uh, both screaming at Rachel Maddow. What I screamed at her, among other things, was this was right when they pulled Hassan off his show. Oh. Are you going to speak up for your Muslim colleagues? No. Are you going to speak for them? Oh, yeah. No. I she's, should say not. She's in in a business of miserable whores. Well, Rachel, she, Rachel Maddow is the whore queen. <laughs> he didn't grow up conscious. He probably always, because, you know, I like I always say, I love his old stuff. <laughs> you ever hear his old speeches where he's talking about Kufar and all that? Mm -mm. Oh, he was like a radical right wing Muslim kind of fire firebrand cleric kind of guy. Yeah. So those old speeches, it, I think that's his one consistent thing is that he cared well, about that. I, I think we've seen this with a few people where like these establishment goons, mm -hmm. a, a genocide in broad daylight against in many cases, as in Hassan's case, against yeah. their own people. It's just a bridge too far. Yeah. It is just a little, it, it's further than they can, that is the inch of their soul that they just can't sell. Yeah, he thought he was going to hold on to that. He can't sell, yeah, well, not at that network. Uh, the anchor, whose final show on the news cabler aired on Sunday, announced his exit at the end of the telecast. The news came after MSNBC late last year uh, that it had canceled the outspoken Hassan show. Quote, it's been an absolute blast doing this live show on MSNBC for the past three years, Hassan said. But as we begin 2024 with an election coming, a war still ongoing and too many Trump trials, honestly, to even keep track of. A little bit for the shit libs for the for his career after <laughs> MSNBC for when, for when he starts his podcast or his blog or whatever, <laughs> whatever the fuck. Uh, and with this show going away, I've decided it's time for me to look for a new challenge. All these people cleaning up on the podcasts. Uh, yeah. Tonight is not just my final episode of the Mehdi Hassan show. It's my last day with MSNBC. Yes, I've decided to leave. To, I am going back to the crossroads and demanding my soul back. Uh, no, I put that in. I think he's to going be, to the clubhouse. To, to be clear, I am so, so proud of what we've achieved on this show, on this network. And I can't thank you enough for tuning in and for your support and for your feedback. And please subscribe to my new venture. But as I put that in. But as I say, new year, new plans. Hassan, a political analyst who had been hosting a program for NBC Universal's Peacock streamer, joined MSNBC's weekend schedule in 2021, which repped one of MSNBC's first changes after Rashida Jones took oversight. The Mehdi Hassan show debuted on Peacock in 2020. Hassan was previously employed by Al Jazeera, where he hosted an English language program and the investigative journalism outlet, The Intercept, where he led a podcast. All right. So a lot of people are saying that this interview in particular is what got him fired. So here is the, as some call him, the Israeli Renfield, Mark Regev. <laughs> Look at him. Uh, keep hearing <laughs> that this great interview by uh, Mehdi Hassan of Netanyahu advisor Mark Regev is one big reason that his show got canceled to adversarial. Mark's got to eat a bug before this interview. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got one up his sleeve. Um, all right, so let's take a look at a, at a highlight of that interview, which honestly, I mean, for anybody who has watched Mehdi Hassan uh, just shill for the establishment attacking uh, real journalists like Matt Taibbi. Um, this was this was shocking to see him is it gonna be, do what he did in this interview. Is it gonna, um, my, this is my guess. It's going to be him going, my friend, my friend, and the other, buddy, nobody, uh, uh, pretty, buddy. Pretty much, if you notice, I could be wrong about this. I think they decided 
that Regev was too creepy for TV and they, they sent a woman to America now to do these interviews. I could, <laughs> I could be wrong, but he's, it seems like, it seems like they sent him back the to, ones from back Israel, to Transylvania. Yeah. Listen, the ones from Israel, you, they, they don't, they don't understand, uh, cause they haven't they, had to have witness yes, they, the they got one who seems years. like an American yeah. Israeli kind of Zionist. That kind of chick that Max talked to, that's the, that's the go between right. exactly. the dutiful daughter. Exactly. Well, well, especially because they're trying to sell these sexual assault allegations. Mm -hmm. So they'd rather have a woman to sell that. Uh, and this guy, really, I mean, he's, he seems like Satan's crafty minion. <laughs> um, all right. So let, let's take a look at a highlight of that. I have seen lots of children with my own lying eyes being pulled from the rubble. Uh, because they're the you pictures don't... Hamas wants you to see. Exactly. And also because point. they're dead. They're Mark. the pictures also, Hamas wants you to see. There are also people no. that your government has uh, killed. You accept that, right? You've killed children or do you deny no, that? No, I do not. I do not. I do not. <laughs> First of all, you don't know how those people died. Those children. Oh, wow. Okay, I, I I love that moment. I hate Mehdi Hassan, but th this is what, just like Joy Reid, when she gets into the yeah. subject, you say, God, these people would be such an asset if they had a conscience. Like if they did decent work like this all the time, well, they would uh, be they would be the best people to have on your side. They think they're allowed to, they, look, I said all the other things I'm supposed to say. Right. So you know? he, yeah, he thought. So I would think he, that he I have thought this he room. thought he had some leeway, but you, yeah. you don't have leeway. They with started these believing, like how Bill Ackman found out DEI is fake. <laughs> just <laughs> now, <laughs> they found out just now. Just that moment where he goes, "Oh wow!" Yeah, like that because that's how he felt. Is he really mm -hmm. going to say we don't know how these children died? What? It, what was it? Rubella? What the yeah. fuck are you even talking about Maybe right just now? Lie like and you can just see they died with rubble on their head, not of rubble on their head. They died with rubble. If, with if, with if, rubble. With, <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. So those two. Oh, wow. First of all, we don't want to see a we single do. child <laughs> killed. Yes, you do. Okay. Here's a, here's we don't my question. Single child killed. Say, I agree with you. Here, I agree with you. We shouldn't blindly believe anything Hamas says. But why should we believe Correct. what your government says either? Your military spokesman on Monday pointed to an Arabic document in the basement of a Gaza hospital and claimed it was a guardian list on which every terrorist writes his name. But that was false. It was just a calendar <laughs> with the days of the week on it. Your colleague in the prime minister's office, Ophir Gendelman, posted behind the scenes footage from a Lebanese short film and claimed it was Palestinians in Gaza faking their own injuries. That tweet is still up a week later. That is endless disinformation from your government, is it not? Yeah, so a lot of people think it's a more extended interview and it's worth checking out. But a lot of people think that's what got him fired. So it probably he, is. Pro I, 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 I mean, I'm saying fired. He claims to have resigned. I very much. He was, didn't resign. It, I he very was much doubt that. Yeah. Uh, Keaton, you have anything on this? Well, I mean, look, this just shows that he has skills. He's a pro. He just uses his skills for evil most of the time. But you see there. Um, a little glimpse of what he is capable of doing were he to use those skills for good. Joy Reid is also on MSNBC. She's a little harder to fire because she's a primetime host. Uh, but she's been surprisingly good uh, on this as well, which, you know, on one hand, look, it's good to see you take the win where you can get it. On the other hand, it's all the more frustrating because you see that these people actually do have skill sets. They are actually good. They are actually capable of yeah, doing good work. It's intentional. Most of the time, they right. simply choose not to. When he says to Mark uh, Regeb there, he says, well, yeah, I mean, you say that's a Hamas talking point, but it's true. Isn't that all that matters, that it's true, that babies are dying under rubble? How many times on that very network have you heard a, a, a hosts like that say, well, that's a Putin talking point? Right. right. Yeah, the, you can I, say the same dude, exact thing. You exactly. say, well, just because it's a Putin talking point doesn't mean it's not true, does it? But of he course, wants you to know it. There. Putin they'll wants never you to go hear there. it. <laughs> right. right. No, All right. Putin no. wants you to hear that. Well, is it true? <laughs> doesn't matter if it's true. That's a Putin talking point. Um, in this example, they're obviously willing to go there. On the Russia Ukraine example, they're not willing to go there. Um, so, and that's just one example. Uh, where you can really see the difference in how they handle those interviews and those types of situations. Not that they even have confrontational. I mean, I don't I don't even think they've had a Ukraine detractor on MSNBC. Uh, I'd be surprised if they ever had any. Uh, probably, probably not. Um, this one for some of their anchors is just a bridge too far. But yes, it does show you, hey, at the end of the day, they're good propagandists. If you're a bad propagandist, you're Joan Walsh and they fire you. It's not like right. they have no standards. I mean, there, there are plenty of people who are willing to just spout establishment talking points. Doesn't mean 
that you're compelling. It doesn't mean you have that thing that makes people watch the camera. So yeah, and and Joy Reid, Mehdi Hassan, I mean, they're they're intelligent. That's what's so frustrating when you watch them working their dark gifts <laughs> on uh, on on you know just murdering truth night after night. Um, and it's even more frustrating seeing what they could do if they found themselves to the uh, light side of the forest. You got something, Kurt? Yeah. Do you remember when uh, Sarah Silverman got in trouble? We covered this a while ago. It, Joanne Reed, she posted something something fake, and Sarah read the article. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like, well, that's not what this says. I mean, I love Joanne Reed, but you you know, you know, got to read the whole thing before you post it. And then Sarah was in trouble for patronizing a, a woman of color that went to wherever the hell Joanne Reed went. And... um. You know what? It was patronizing. Joanne Reed was deliberately lying. She didn't not read the article. Right. She is right. a college graduate. She's just a conscious liar. Come see us do a live stand-up show. We'll be in Venice, California, Palmdale, California, Omaha, Des Moines, Milwaukee, Lansing, Bend, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, Boston, Massachusetts, and we're going to Europe. Do you live in Europe? We're going to be there. Go to jibbydoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm -hmm.